So last night it was forecast to be nice and clear and then this happened. I guess sometimes the, uh, the weather forecast can just get it wrong. But today we have beautiful clear skies and the forecast later on is showing some cloud. But I'm hoping we can get at least a few hours of astro in with the twin rasses. Now tonight's mission is to finish off that mosaic of the Lagoon Nebula. Now I don't quite know how many frames I'm going to be able to get on each panel. There's going to be four panels in total. The reason I'm doing this is I'm trying to work out if I've fixed the problem with the mount disconnecting in Nina. I've been having that issue over the past couple of uh, couple of imaging nights and I really hope I've got it fixed. So we'll find out tonight. Now, to those that are new to my channel, or might be viewing this video for the very first time, let's just talk about exactly what I've got set up here behind me. I have two Celestron Rasa 8 telescopes. I absolutely love imaging at F2. And on the front end of the Rasas, I've got ZWO ASI 294mm and MC Pro cameras. So this one here is the mono, and on the other rasa, I've got the color. Now the mono is using a uh, Astronomic Max FR HA filter. And on the color, I've got the Astronomic L1 UV IR cut filter. I really do love the filters I get from uh, the quality of the filters from Astronomic. Now, because everything was set up last night, and it was slightly clear and then it went patchy cloud and then it went just full cloud. Everything's all aligned and ready to go. So fingers crossed, it stays clear and we can get ourselves a few images of the lagoon in a nice four panel mosaic. While we wait for it to get a little bit darker, I thought I'd uh, go over some of the things that uh, we do in astrophotography to make sure our images come out as clear and as trail free as possible. And one of those things is making sure your mount or your setup is balanced. Okay, if your setup is not balanced correctly, then you're going to have all sorts of guiding and tracking issues. So it is very important to make sure that your system is nicely balanced. Now, I just love shooting with the twin rasses. Um, it's, it's an absolute dream of mine to start uh, dual imaging. And it's been a bit of a journey, to be honest with you, in the whole dual imaging uh, setup. I originally started with two ZWO ASI Air Pros running the cameras, and then I wanted to start dithering but I couldn't synchronize the cameras. So I went to the Eagle 4 uh, computer and I started uploading a whole bunch of software like Nina that can enable synchronization of PHD2 and therefore I can get synchronized dithering between both of the cameras. And that there has been such a large learning curve. I just usually love the simplicity of astrophotography. And when you go to a dual imaging setup, Simplicity is completely out of the window, uh, but it is also so much fun and the kind of data you can get like this setup is, is pretty crazy, I've found out. Uh, since imaging with the HA mono camera and then the color RGB camera and creating HA RGB images, it's really increased the amount of detail in my astro photos. 
without me having to go so crazy with the processing side of things. So I'm really excited to see what we can do under some dark skies. But until I can start really imaging underneath dark skies and creating these huge mosaic projects that I've only dreamed about doing, uh, we need to get things right. And the first thing in getting right is that mount, the mount disconnect issues that I've been having. Uh, I've got an idea on how that's how we can fix that. And I'll just talk about what I was previously doing. In Nina, when I'd select the equipment and the telescope, I would just go to CPWI. Now, CPWI is Celestron's uh, Stellarium start type program where you can pick objects to go slew to. You can do your uh, um, your three star three point star alignment, your polar alignment. You can even control a Celestron focus motor through that software. It is really cool software and I love it. So when I was able to select CPWI as my mount software that Nina could talk to, I thought great, perfect. However, I've been having issues where I would get disconnection problems. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going through ASCOM. I'm going to connect through a host and use uh, use the ASCOM server. And then by using the ASCOM, I'm pointing the ASCOM to the CPWI. So fingers crossed that works and it gives us a stable uh, connection with the mount and Nina. And therefore, I'm away basically. I can then be able to go off and shoot my frames and then move to the next uh, subject and shoot those frames and move to the next panel and shoot those frames and fingers crossed we have four panels tonight um, completed stitched together creating a nice wide field image of the lagoon and Trifid nebula now i do have that uncertainty of clouds i don't know what i'm going to do there so in terms of how many images I'm going to get per panel, I think I'm going to be safe and just go for, say, 15 frames. So 15 lights in HA, and I'm, being, I'm going to be times in that by four for the RGB. So I'm going to be shooting 60 RGB images because I'm going to be shooting them at 30, 30 second um, exposures. And the HA, I'm going to be shooting at 120 second exposures. So it will give me four RGB to one HA. Now, the HA is basically where everything runs from. The RGB is the synchronization and the clone. So, uh, yeah, hopefully I can get all these frames, all these images, everything runs nice and smooth before the clouds start coming over. Fingers crossed. Now let's just wait for it to get a little bit darker. Well, I think that about uh, cools it for our imaging session tonight. It is quite dewy, and I don't know if you can see, that's my uh, top lapse camera. Um, it's copped a bit. And as you can see, there's a lot of uh, cloud about at the moment as well, which caused me a few little issues um, throughout the, the uh, capturing of all the frames. Uh, I believe it's the panel, first panel, and the last panel, where 
I had some issues with the the guiding because of the clouds and uh, and whatnot, but I had no problems whatsoever with the mount disconnecting. Everything worked absolutely perfect. So I'm really confident now to start taking this system out underneath some dark skies and begin these huge projects that I've always wanted to shoot and uh, and and dream of of putting together. Um, what can I say? It seems like so far it's pretty good timing because Orion is just around the corner. And between the Milky Way starting to set and disappear for the year and Orion starting to rise, there is one other target I want to attack. I still haven't built the mosaic for that yet, but hopefully I will soon. And I do know that this target is very challenging because it's only about 20 degrees above the horizon. So... Again, another challenge, but something I absolutely love. Well, guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to leave a comment. And if you're new to this channel, please check out some of my other videos. All right, well, I'll leave you with the images that I've captured and the final mosaic. So until next time, guys, take it easy. See you.